Hey friends, it's Friday, September 18th, 2020, and I come to you from Noada United Methodist Church, and it's a beautiful day outside, and uh, I wanted to share a brief scripture with you. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. This was written by Paul to uh, a church community that was uh, a little thick-headed. They had a hard time behaving in the way they ought, so this is, he said a lot of things before now, but here's just a little snippet. As God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favor I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. This is an important, uh, all scriptures important. But how many of us look at our lives, when we reflect on our lives, and we know the things that we ought to do, and we say, I'll do them someday, I'll do them before I die, but we don't do them today. We kick the can down the road, and there's always an excuse. When you're young, uh, the excuse is, oh, I'm not mature enough, I don't have all the resources, I'll do it when I'm older. When you're in middle age, the excuse is, oh, I have all these financial concerns, bills to pay, children uh, to raise. When you're older, you're saying, oh, I did my time, it's time for somebody else. Or you're saying, oh, I'm too tired, I'm too anxious. Uh, there's always an excuse. But what happens if we realize that today is the day of salvation? The day of salvation isn't someday off in the future. The day of salvation is today. What happens then? Here Paul says, don't receive the grace of God in vain. In vain means... It, it, it has no purpose. It has no meaning. How many people are there who hear the good news of Jesus Christ, that he has the power and has chosen to save us from sin and death through his atoning sacrifice on the cross, that he, is, he has paid the price that we couldn't pray, pay? Uh, how many people have heard that good news? How many people have said that they received that good news only to go back to their daily anxieties and resentments? Uh, not living freely and in God's service, but choosing instead to uh, continue to kick that can and make excuses. Um, I sat with uh, a friend that God's put in my life recently. He's a, a black gentleman from No Wada, and uh, ever since racial tensions and strife have erupted, he's been on my mind. I've thought, you know, that guy could really help me figure out God's will for uh, no water in the surrounding area so far as uh, how do we create a, a colorblind future, a future that's equally good for people of all colors, which is the American dream and, of course, what we're going to find in God's kingdom. And I was anxious about this conversation because things are so fraught when you get on social media or you turn on the TV. It just looks like people can't even have a conversation. If they ever could before, they certainly can't now. But God blessed this conversation. And I sat together with a brother in Christ. And even though the world would have us be on separate sides and would have us perhaps be enemies, we weren't enemies. We talked about what is it that's, uh, that's keeping communities apart that's, that's, you know, 50 years after the Civil Rights Movement. Why is it that there's so much tension and and we agreed it's because we don't enter each other's spheres enough. We don't, we don't interact with people who are different from us. We don't go out on that limb. We don't get out of our comfort zone. And so when we're talking about what the answer is, the answer is going out on that limb, leaving our comfort zone, um, intentionally building relationships with people who are different from us. It requires extra work. It requires anxiety and awkwardness. Nobody likes those things, so we choose to stick with people like us. But if today is the day of salvation, if today is the day when God's kingdom is breaking into our lives and into this world, then the decision is, am I going to be a part of that, or am I going to stay comfortable on my own terms? And when I frame it that way, I hope the answer there is, is clear. Uh, you can't blame worldly ends for choosing comfort, but what about those of us who claim to follow Christ? Is there any good reason as to why we should be remaining separate from those who are culturally different from us? Is there any reason why we should be continually choosing the path of least resistance, the easy path, the path that doesn't challenge us? 
just a closing meditation on this whole family of ideas. I notice a lot of people feeling very tired. Um, a good word is haggard. A lot of people um, that I talk to about the things that they know they should be doing. Well, a lot of their reason is I'm just tired. I'm so tired. I think we all know we're not supposed to be tired day in and day out. I think that's where Satan wants us. So what's making you tired? Why are you so tired? And is there any way that you can maybe get out of that? You know, I talk to people all the time who are tired and we get down to the reason of why it is that they're tired or they're stressed out. And then we identify it and I say, okay, well, are you ready to give it up? And nine times out of ten, no, they are not ready or willing to give it up. The very thing that is taxing them, that is poisoning them, the, the, the toxic thing in their life that is making them ha too haggard to follow the Lord, well, that's their crutch that they need. So what's to be done about that? That's where my conversation with my friend ended up today. What needs to be done? Now, we've got a couple ideas, and we're going to try them out, but the reality is that the cards are stacked against us. The darkness has always been easier than the light, and people have always been drawn to darkness generally rather than light. But when we are the children of the light, then we don't live in darkness. So I wanted to exhort, encourage any uh, brothers or sisters in Christ who end up watching this, spending these minutes with me, to be the light, to stop making excuses. If you got things that are making you tired, well, get rid of them. If they're your children, don't get rid of them. Just learn to parent in ways that, that don't make you tired or find ways to, to get energy despite the fact that you're tired. I notice a lot of people, man, I said I was wrapping up, but I just got to say, a lot of people are tired because they're spending every spare moment watching TV, playing video games, listening to music, these are not things that generally renew you. They're things that just fill the time so that the very next time something comes up, you're, you haven't been uh, filling yourself back up. You're as depleted as you were when you started, and then you're just getting more and more depleted. Do those things that fill your cup back up. Do those things that renew and refresh you. And if you don't know this already, Jesus is a big part of that, or rather his Holy Spirit. So if you want to know more about that, reach out to me. Use your church. If you don't have a church, use my church. Um, that's what the church is here for, to renew, replenish, encourage, sustain those who wish to walk in the light. So God bless you. I, I hope that the Lord speaks to you and ministers to you soon. I, I pray that this small message I've given does its part to make the case for the light. Um, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Bye.